My name is Sene, a student in grade A. This is me, Sene, and I'm 12. I live in a small village in Siem Reap province in Cambodia. This is my home, and behind me is my family. Mom, dad, my brothers and sisters, my aunt, and even my grandma. <laughs> Today is a big day for me because I can see and touch a computer for the first time in my life. And this is thanks to the people behind the camera who are interviewing me. They come from Atlassian, from Australia and the USA, but I don't really know where that is. <laughs> I just know that they make software and that they give money to Room to Read. <laughs> this is Carl. He is the president of Room to Read in Cambodia, and I like him a lot. Please welcome to uh, Room to Read uh, office in Chimrip. Room to have established uh, their office in uh, later 2002, and until now it was about 12 years in this country. Room to read, when we are strong, we are big, enough, we can negotiate. I, I met with the minister at least once a year. Once a year, and I can call you know, the Secretary of State all those senior people by phone and say, here, this is problem. I can go to meeting with them and tell, this is problem, he cannot accept it, can you change? I think we can do that. But I told you, not many NGO can do that. So I have six siblings in my family, and I am the oldest one. My mother forced me to drop out of school frequently, and I've had to make a promise to her that if I fail any grade, I will drop out. And I continued my studies until grade 12, and I failed. So I did what I promised, and I dropped out. After that, Room to Read came to my village to select social mobilizers. I applied for the position, and I got it. I'm very happy for the job because now people look at me like I'm more educated. Most of the people in my village are farmers, and now I have the chance to encourage other girls to continue their studies. I really hope that Room to Read will continue to support and change the mindset of people in the village so that they can have the same opportunities as me. Now my parents listen to my advice. Before, when they would argue, they didn't really talk to each other. Now I can make them console one another and get them to talk to each other. Another example is that my father, he used to smoke. When I was younger, I tried to convince him not to, but he didn't listen to me. But now that I've gone through teacher training school, and I've finished school and I'm a teacher, now he is listening to my advice when I tell him the disadvantages of smoking. You know, after getting an education, girls can learn how to value themselves so they can find work that is suitable for them. And when they have a family, they can give support, economic support to the family. And the husband and wife will have equal rights in the family and will also help with domestic violence in the family as well. My country, Cambodia, is big and beautiful, but it was devastated by the Khmer Rouge for many years before I was even born. Today I can learn the history of my country in school books. Right now I'm very satisfied because we have materials provided by Room to Read and still offer teaching skills and now offer library management skill training through Room to Read. Now the children, they really, really want to read and every time that they are free or they have a break, they will rush to the library to pick up a book to read. 
Before, parents didn't pay much attention to the learning at home, but now that we've introduced the idea, parents have started to value education. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher because I want to teach other people living in my village. I have a younger sibling in grade one. They can't read yet, but I brought a book home when I was in grade four, and I read to my younger sibling and also sometimes my parents. My favorite thing to do outside of school is drawing. I love drawing and bringing it to the library and sticking it on the wall. We're happy that you, our brothers and sisters, are coming to our schools. And I want to do activities like reading and also doing these interviews. In general, at the primary school, most of the kids in the family can access the school, but when it comes to upper education, they find it challenging, because some schools are not located near their home. If they live far from the school, they have to choose. They can't afford for all of their children to go to school, so they have to choose among them who should go. And then the decision is not that they don't want it, but they can't afford it. Parents send their kids to school, but they aren't really motivated because they are here for only a few years and they still can't read or write. But after those last few years, we have all of these things from room to read, and we've raised the awareness. We see the motivation increasing. The parents see their children reading, and that their children can learn, and that they see results. And this is one of the reasons we have raised up the registration and attendance to more than 90%. And especially since we have this room to read library and food program, which provides food for schools. Before, kids would come to school in the morning hungry. Now they have breakfast at school. And that's why this program attracts parents and changes their mindsets. My name is Rima and I'm in grade 2. My class is very good. Everybody works very hard. Our teacher told us today that we will have guests coming and that we should behave properly. And we did. Yes, we did behave properly. I study in the morning, and sometimes I will take one or two books home. After lunch, I will read by myself because my siblings, they all go to school in the afternoon, but me, I stay home. Usually I read quietly, but in school, I'm a little bit louder because I like to show other students that I can read a lot. Yeah, that's why I like to read out loud at school. I forgot the title of my favorite book. I'll go get it.
Here we are at Razmi Rath Primary School. The number of students has really increased. Back in 2000, there were 10 classes. Today, there are 18. We now also have 12 teachers, including seven female instructors. You know, the, the society has changed drastically for the last 10-15 uh, years in Cambodia. Well, the way the family controlling it's not changing so much because the parents who are, have some of them even no education, they're trying to be a, a controlling with their daughter and even know what is in the future. And, and they used to do that and, and with this power distance, they just make decision to their, on behalf of the girl and, and without even knowing what, what it is, without any ability to analyze. So far, you know, I mean, the society was all easy to manipulate, but the way we're teaching the girls, when you have this information, you have to do processing to analyze and then make decisions. And, and this is really important because the, the school where they learn, the curriculum is not designed for that. The, the curriculum is designed to teach the girl to follow what it's telling the teacher tells you to do. The problem is now, enrollment keeps increasing. Like this year, I had to add a class to absorb the new kids, and next year, if it continues to do that, I don't think I can do it again, because I don't have any classrooms available to absorb those new kids. Before, the roof was not like this. It was a similar tile roof, and it leaked most of the time. That's why we requested Room to Read to help renovate. Actually, this hall was not built for school purposes. It was built with another partner of the school. It was meant to be used as a meeting hall for students to gather together, a place for breakfast and meals. But since we don't have enough classrooms here, that's why we use it for these three classes. You know that for those that completed primary school, over 90% of them go on to secondary school. But more than 30% drop out before they complete secondary school education. There are several reasons for this, but the biggest reason is related to poverty. Some of them are very poor, so they need their children to work in the field and do other things like migrant work. They take their kids with them, and some of them don't even return. And some that get to grade five and grade six, they're becoming teenagers and they go out to find a job to make money. That's the reason they drop out. I moved to move to the to the to the to the Even if Cambodia is evolving, it remains a very poor country. A lot of kids like me only go to school in the morning. In the afternoon, we often have to work with our parents to try to make more money because they don't have enough to pay for our school. Oh, cool. Yeah, I thought I'd show them the real thing. And set thing over there. Okay. My name is Maded. I'm in grade six at my school. I usually read five books per week. I love this book because it's funny. This book is about an uncle who went to the forest with two nephews and they have lunch and only have one fish that they didn't share. And since he didn't share, a buffalo chases only the uncle. 
The way that they write about the chase is so funny. If I had only one fish, I would share with all my friends. Here in Cambodia, I don't know why, but when a family has money to send one of its children to school, they often choose to send the boy. Thanks to Room to Read, however, and its girls' education program, 15,000 girls like me can complete secondary school. In fact, Atlassian has now helped more than 250,000 children get access to an education. Ah, this is my school, Popel. It's a secondary school. I have a lot of friends here. I mean, look like Jim Moon, the bong, the bone, the day. I love Dutch Nam people. We moved the school here in 2010 and 2011. We were fortunate enough to receive funding from the government to build this one building, and a year later, we were permitted to build a second building. So now we have three classes for grade 7, three classes for grade 9, and three classes for grade 8. The number of staff has increased to nine staff, and we still have to increase it from year to year. When we first established this school, even though the students were registered, the dropout rate was significant. But since Room to Read joined, they are helping the school and community to find a way to raise awareness about education. The dropout rate has decreased from year to year, and now is quite a small percentage. Honestly, I see that the girls are leading. They are becoming outstanding. The number of girls registering keeps increasing compared to boys. Right now we have a total of 475 students and girls are dominating, with almost 300 girls registered. And this result is because of Room to Read and partially from our social mobilizers. The pillar program is calling the uh, literacy program and girl education program. The uh, girl education program is designed to support and creating opportunity for girls to access to lower secondary school and potentially completed high school. And the program also, it's helping, it's not just achieving their education part, but it's also focused on the uh, life skill, which is necessary for the girl, uh, particularly in the countryside, to having uh, a self-confidence, uh, to having the uh, ability to make decisions and, and also uh, negotiation on any key life issue which is affect their future life in terms of the, uh, forcing them to early marry, drop out, they be able to negotiate. Honestly, I am very happy to have the donors and the distinguished guests visit our school. Before I joined Room to Read, I was a very shy girl. I was not a girl who talks and didn't care much about studying. I didn't have proper behavior and didn't know how to communicate, and I didn't know about setting goals or planning for the future. I had no idea what that was. And now with my friends, I can share stress. When they have any issues, they can share with me. I know how to take care of myself, and I know how to clean myself, my body, when I have my periods. 
I know how to clean around my house, how to keep the environment clean. When we are talking about early marriage, I feel shocked. I was the head of the teen help team, and I had two members get married. And at that time, we hadn't yet studied about early marriage causing any problems, so we didn't know. I feel very, very sorry for them, because at that time, I didn't have sufficient knowledge to explain to them. And they came to school, and we have seen them becoming more frequently absent, and we don't see them. Then one day, we were shocked because they came in and said that they were married. I tried to explain, but it was a bit late. In the lessons, we learn that if we get married early, we are not mature enough to manage our lives, and if we get a bad husband with a bad attitude who is drinking and does not have a proper job, it becomes a worse situation, especially when you are in a poor family. And I made sure I told this to my brother and my other siblings. If my mom tried to force me to marry, I would not, and I would tell her why. Today, thanks to Room to Read's education programs and their great social mobilizers, I have a lot of hope. I really think that I will be able to finish my studies. I don't even mind waking up at four in the morning every day if it means I get to go to school. Honestly, it's not always easy, but at least I know that my community and especially my parents supports me. And you know, my education matters so much to me. Thank you for choosing my daughter to do the Room to Read interview. If there is no Room to Read, then my daughters wouldn't be here today. They would have dropped out in grade 5 or 6. We tried to do what we can to provide emotional support. We believe that our children will have a better future if they have a better education. At school, I learned how to dress myself properly and how to take care of my house. Sometimes I'm almost afraid to talk to my mom because I don't want people to say that I'm educating her. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a writer or a Khmer language teacher. If I'm a teacher, I can make kids happy when they read the book that I would have written for them. School is a very happy place for me, and for all the other kids as well. I have many friends at school, so I don't really feel lonely going there. I can communicate very well with all the other children. Boma Lai is my social mobilizer. She comes to my house and sometimes she explains how to make things better and cleaner. She also comes to my house to talk to my parents, especially my mother, because she is always questioning the importance of education. But my mom also asks about my performance in class.
My social mobilizer also gives me emotional support. She tells me that even if I am poor, I can still continue to study and have a great education. I want to say thank you to Atlassian, who is supporting all the girls here. And also thank you for making computer software. I hope that the kids can use it one day and enjoy it. I was asking her, I'm going to ask, has she ever used a computer? Never. She said, oh, we don't have a computer at school. Has she seen it? Has she seen a computer? Has she seen a computer? No. No? No? Does she want to see a computer? She doesn't want to see a computer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Back. On behalf of the Cambodian children, on behalf of Room Grade Cambodia and globally, we would like to take this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much to Atlassian who is supporting us and not only supporting and providing uh, uh, financial support to this program and taking and, and giving opportunity for us to support those girls, but this kind of visit is really, really inspiring. It is a meaningful uh, uh, visit. It will help the children, the Cambodian children, where the school will visit. It will be a, a lifetime memorable, and I, I think this is a really a, a, a big things for Cambodian children to learn and, and seeing, like the way we are working, the way we are interacting. It's, it's really a kind of the uh, invaluable input uh, to Cambodian. And again, I was saying. Thank you so much for all your support, and I do believe it. You know, um, this is really a thing which is we will work together to make it sure uh, the next generation uh, will be uh, becoming better, lie and more prosperous. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> 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 